The Sahara is the largest desert in the world. Its sands have hidden the most amazing secrets from human eyes for centuries. But scientists are challenging the extreme heat and drought to uncover the secrets that this desert holds. In this video, I will tell you about the most secretive scientific discoveries in the desert that shock everyone. Enjoy watching. Mauritania is a state located in West Africa, with the majority of its territory covered by the endless sands of the Sahara Desert. Mining holds significant economic importance for Mauritania, accounting for 38% of the country's GDP. Archaeologists know that local inhabitants have been engaged in mining since the 5th millennium BC. This state is known for having the world's richest iron deposits. But in addition, Mauritania also mines copper, oil, salt, gypsum, diamonds, and of course gold. Gold in Mauritania is found in Proterozoic granitoids and volcanics. The level of gold production in Mauritania is 8, 10 tons per year, with total reserves estimated at 800 tons. Currently, two companies are engaged in gold mining in the country. The largest gold mine, Tassiast, is owned by the Canadian company Kinross Gold. This enterprise began its operations in 2008. The abundance of natural resources in Mauritania proves that deserts hide real treasures in their sands. Thanks to satellite images, scientists often make sensational discoveries. Among them are the ruins of ancient lost cities in the Sahara Desert in Libya. In a photo taken from space, British scientists discovered more than 100 fortified structures resembling castles. According to experts, their age is about 2,000 years. These settlements were built by the representatives of the ancient Garamantian civilization, about which little is known to science. Therefore, this finding was of great value to historians and archaeologists. During the exploration of the ruins, specialists from the University of Leicester found castle-like structures up to four meters high, remnants of local residents' houses, burial pyramids, and even irrigation systems. This discovery was direct evidence of historical inconsistencies. The fact is that in ancient Roman chronicles, the Garamantes were described as wild nomads. But the ruins of these cities suggest that they were a sedentary and highly developed civilization that managed to adapt to life in a desert region with incredible drought. In October 2020, a study by experts on Spinosaurus was published in the journal Cretaceous Research. In it, scientists discussed their findings discovered in the Sahara Desert. It turns out that over the past few years, during extensive excavations, they found 1,200 teeth belonging to this type of dinosaur. As strange as it sounds, in the desert area where the teeth were found, the Kem Kem River flowed millions of years ago. It was previously believed that Spinosaurus were exclusively terrestrial animals, but this finding proves otherwise. According to paleontologists, Spinosaurus were well adapted to an aquatic lifestyle. This is indicated by the vast number of these dinosaurs' teeth found at the site of the once flowing river in the desert. Scientists say that such a quantity of teeth could only have been left by animals that were constantly in the water. This discovery has allowed science to learn more about the life activities of Spinosaurus and understand how mistaken the view was that they were exclusively terrestrial animals. Using the Palsar radar instrument, scientists made a sensational discovery. In the desert, they found the riverbed of the ancient Tamanrasset River. This river flowed through the Sahara Desert 5,000 years ago. Its sources were likely located in the Southern Atlas Mountains and the Ahagar Highlands in Algeria. Currently, this area is considered very arid, but once, rain was frequent. Thanks to this, the river was so large and full-flowing. The Tamanrasset stretched 500 kilometers, reaching the Atlantic Ocean in Mauritania. Had it not dried up, it would now be the 12th largest river in the world. The Tamanrasset was a vital feature in the desert, home to a vast number of animals, with ample vegetation along its banks. Undoubtedly, such a large river was a true salvation in the desert, but unfortunately, climate change led to its complete drying up. 
Many people, finding themselves in the middle of the desert with a broken car, would panic. But French electrician Emile Leray proved that one should never give up. This story took place in the distant year of 1993. Leray left Morocco in his vintage Citroën 2 CV car, heading towards a military outpost across the desert. When he had covered half the distance, his car hit a rock and broke down. After inspecting the car, he realized that one of the axles and the pendulum lever were damaged. Repairing the car in the desolate desert was impossible, but walking to a populated area was not the best idea either. Therefore, Leray decided to dismantle his car for parts and build a motorcycle. Of course, this task was long and labor-intensive. It took the man 12 days to assemble the vehicle. Fortunately, he had prepared responsibly for the desert crossing and had brought enough water and food. To make a motorcycle out of car parts, he shortened the chassis, attached two wheels, and placed the engine in the middle of the structure. When the bike was ready, the French electrician set off and reached his destination the next day. Amazingly, the police fined him for driving an unregistered vehicle. But Leray was not upset at all, as this motorcycle helped him survive in the Sahara Desert. From 2002 to 2009, archaeologists conducted extensive research in the little explored territory of Western Sahara. During this time, they discovered more than a hundred mysterious stone structures, ranging from 1,000 to 3,000 years old. All these objects had different shapes and, accordingly, different purposes. Some were crescent-shaped, others formed circles or other geometric figures. Among them were ruins of primitive buildings and simple piles of stones. Archaeologists also encountered several objects in which all these forms were combined into a whole. For example, one of the structures included straight lines, circles, and platforms made of stones. This entire composition formed a complex about 630 meters long. To this day, the purpose of these structures is unknown, but archaeologists believe they may indicate the location of graves as human remains about 1,500 years old were found under some stone piles. The Wadi al hitan Valley located 150 kilometers from Cairo in Egypt, is one of the most renowned archaeological landmarks. It contains numerous whale remains, about 50 million years old. But how did whales end up in the desert? Scientists believe that 40, 50 million years ago, this area was underwater. At that time, the Tethys Sea was located south of the modern Mediterranean Sea, gradually shifting northward. The dried-up areas formed a layer of limestone and sand deposits, where the whale remains were found. Interestingly, among these remains, archaeologists have discovered fossils of whales that had four legs. Yes, you heard it right. The ancient ancestors of the largest mammals could indeed move on land. This species became known to science for the first time in 2008. These whales were named Phyomycetus anubis, after the Egyptian god Anubis because their heads somewhat resembled a dog's head. The body length of these animals reached three meters. They were armed with long jaws and powerful teeth. With such natural weapons, the whales could easily crush a crocodile. Scientists believe that Phyomycetus anubis were dangerous predators that primarily lived in water, but occasionally ventured onto land. In the Egyptian desert, near the city of El Guna, there is a stunning composition created from holes and mounds in the sand. It impresses with its beauty and magnificence, especially from a bird's eye view or from space. Proponents of pseudoscientific theories have tried to attribute the object to alien creations, but their claims were quickly debunked. The creators of this composition are artists Danae and Alexandra Stratou and Stella Constantinides. The authors named their art object Breath of the Desert. The construction of the composition was completed in March 1997. The object covers an area of 360 by 300 meters and consists of two spirals. The first includes 89 cones, whose diameter and height increase as they move away from the center. The second spiral consists of 89 conical depressions, whose diameter and depth also increase following the same principle as the first spiral. At the center is a cavity that reflects the sun when filled with water. 
The author's concept was for the art object to gradually erode and eventually disappear, thus demonstrating a vivid illustration of the transience of our time. However, nearly 30 years have passed since the construction was completed, but the breath of the desert remains almost in its original state. In the heart of the Sahara Desert, a team of archaeologists led by American paleontologist Paul Serino discovered an ancient cemetery with human remains. Originally, Serino came to the Tenere region in search of dinosaur fossils. This region is known for its extreme conditions, making excavations very challenging. Despite this, Serino's team took on nature's challenge, but instead of finding dinosaur fossils, they stumbled upon ancient human burials. Human bones were literally protruding from the sands, making them impossible to miss. Due to harsh weather conditions, the research had to be paused, but in 2003, it resumed. The archaeologists then found 67 burials containing not only human remains, but also some ancient artifacts. Scientists accustomed to working with fossils and determining the age of the rock containing remains now had to work with well-preserved bones. Carbon analysis of the remains and ancient tools shed light on the history of this region. About 10,000 years ago, strong hunters and fishermen migrated here, who were attributed by experts to the Kiffian culture. Previously, there was a lake in this territory, rich in large mollusks, likely attracting ancient people, which is why they settled in the area of the modern desert. According to the remains found, the Kiffians were quite tall people. Women's height rarely was below 180 centimeters, and men's height exceeded 2 meters. This discovery opened a new page in the history of humanity for scientists and helped to learn more about the anatomy and lifestyle of ancient people who inhabited this desert territory. The most solitary and unique tree in the world is considered to be an acacia, known as the Tree of Tenere. The acacia became the subject of interest for many scientists in the early 1930s. But why? The fact is that it grew alone in the Tenere Desert. Tenere is located in the very center of the Sahara. The heat here not only dries the air but also takes away all the moisture from any living organisms. Moreover, sandstorms regularly rage here. Of course, this place is uninhabited. Even birds prefer not to stop in Tenere. But all these inhospitable conditions did not prevent the acacia from growing and thriving. Scientists estimated its age to be at least 300 years, which means that the tree somehow learned to extract underground water and fight strong winds and scorching sun. It's no wonder it was considered sacred. For foreigners, especially military personnel, the acacia served as a kind of landmark in the desert. Unfortunately, in 1959, a military truck crashed into the tree. But even in such a state, it continued to live until 1973, when it was finally destroyed by one of the Libyan trucks. Now, at the site of the once flourishing Tree of Tenere, there is a metal sculpture commemorating this wonder in the middle of the Sahara Desert. In 2020, researchers discovered a massive meteorite weighing 32 kilograms in the Sahara Desert. After analysis, it was determined to be a fragment of a protoplanet, with an age of 4.6 billion years. The meteorite was named EC002. Scientists classified it as an achondrite, a type of stony meteorite that lacks rounded inclusions. Achondrites contain basalt and are of Martian or lunar origin. However, EC002 did not contain basalt. Instead, it was made of andesite, a magmatic volcanic rock. Basalt forms through the rapid cooling of magnesium and iron-rich lava, whereas andesite is formed from silicates with a high sodium content. On our planet, it occurs in so-called subduction zones at the boundaries of lithospheric plates, where one block of the Earth's crust sinks beneath another. EC002 is a unique meteorite because its composition suggests it belongs to the protoplanets of the early solar system. This finding has helped scientists understand how the primary crust that covered the ancient planet was formed. The Sahara Desert is known not only for its endless sands, 
but also for hosting a marathon for true daredevils ready to challenge the extreme heat, drought, and blazing sun. This competition is very dangerous as participants have to cover more than 200 kilometers across the desert. One such daredevil, who narrowly escaped the clutches of death, was Mauro Prosperi. Participants in this six-day extreme marathon had to walk 250 kilometers through the Sahara. Despite the risks, all these people paid over Euro 3000 to participate. For this money, the marathon organizers provided them with a free flight to the starting point and 12 liters of water per day. Mauro had been preparing for the challenge for a long time. He ran about 40 kilometers daily and became accustomed to dealing with dehydration. However, he was certainly not prepared for what he had to endure in the desert. When the marathon runner had covered two-thirds of the distance, he hoped to find himself near a water distribution point again, but suddenly, a sandstorm started. Mauro suspected he had strayed off course and got lost. Fortunately, he had some supplies of water and food in his backpack. But even with these, he was ready to end his life when he realized that waiting for help was futile. While taking shelter from the sun in one of the caves, he decided he must survive, if only for his children. Amazingly, he managed to do so. For 10 days, he fought against the forces of nature and finally found people. He was discovered by one of the desert settlement residents. Despite this perilous story, Mauro has not abandoned his extreme hobbies and is now involved in kayaking down mountain peaks. In the territory of the Great Sand Sea, located between Western Egypt and Libya, researchers often find a unique tektite known as Libyan Desert Glass, or Le Chatelierites. Libyan Desert Glass consists of transparent or semi-transparent stones. Their hue can be light yellow or even greenish. They are scattered throughout the Great Sand Sea and shine among the sands like jewels. Le Chatelierites have been known since ancient times, for example, in one of Tutankhamun's totemic necklaces, the scarab's body was made of this glass. However, the first sample of this stone only reached scientists' hands in 1933. Since then, its origin has been the subject of many scientific debates. Some believed that Le Chatelierites were actually moonstones. Other scientists suggested that Libyan desert glass was formed after lightning strikes hit the sand. However, most leaned towards the version that this tektite was formed after a meteorite impact. Libyan desert glass is unique in appearance and chemical composition. It contains many particles of two varieties of zirconium oxide. Cubic zirconia forms at temperatures of at least 2500 degrees Celsius and ortho-2 zirconium at a pressure of 130,000 atmospheres. This information helped scientists confirm their guesses. Libyan desert glass indeed appeared as a result of a meteorite falling into the Libyan desert. Quite recently, with the help of satellite images, the supposed location of the impact crater was discovered. However, since it is entirely covered by sands, conducting research in this area is practically impossible. The Ubari Lakes, located in the Libyan part of the Sahara Desert, form one of the most beautiful oases in the world. Scientists believe that about 100,000 years ago, they were much deeper and more extensive, serving as a source of fresh drinking water for animals and humans. However, over time, everything changed. Today, the Ubari Oasis includes 20 lakes surrounded by palm trees. The shallowest among them is Gabrun, with a depth of about 7 meters, and the deepest is Ayn al-Dibana, with a depth of at least 30 meters. All these water bodies are subject to drying up. Moreover, their waters contain an incredible concentration of salt, comparable to the Dead Sea. Of course, this water is not suitable for drinking, and the only inhabitants of the lakes are small, shrimp-like creatures. Locals catch them, grind them into a paste, and make delicious pies from it. Indeed, an oasis with clean water is vitally important for people and animals, but climate changes have turned Ubari into a system of lakes with water unsuitable for drinking. Chingueti is an ancient city located in Mauritania. Unfortunately, it is gradually losing its inhabitants as the desert slowly engulfs it in its sands. In the 18th century, 
the city was revived as a fortified settlement on the Trans-Saharan trade routes. Since Chinguetti was the first city on the pilgrim's route to Mecca, it was considered a holy place. At that time, schools, administrative buildings, and Muslim temples were built in its territory. The city was densely populated, but now it is home to about 4,000 people. Chinguetti is famous for its libraries. It is believed that there were about 30 libraries at the beginning of the 20th century, but only five repositories of valuable manuscripts have survived to the present day. All these libraries are private, and the ancient treasure troves of knowledge and history are passed down through families from generation to generation. All books and manuscripts in these libraries are on open shelves, and as the city gradually falls under the sway of sands, valuable artifacts slowly turn to dust. The Mauritanian authorities have repeatedly tried to save the contents of the libraries, but their keepers have refused. They believe that being a guardian of their people's history is a great honor bestowed from above. In 1837, German paleontologist Hermann von Meyer discovered a large number of conical blunt teeth in Switzerland. Nothing like this had been known to science before, so he attributed the remains to an ancient species of reptiles, which he named Madrimosaurus hugi. However, a year later the name was changed to Maximosaurus hugi, which literally means ready for war in ancient Greek. In 2016, in the Sahara Desert, paleontologists once again discovered fossils of an ancient giant crocodile, including ribs, vertebrae, and a skull measuring 160 centimeters in length. These data allowed scientists to speculate that the reptile could grow up to 10 meters in length. If this was indeed the case, Maximosaurus was the record holder among all known crocodiles to science. It was previously believed that all members of the Thalassosaurs, to which Maximosaurus rex belonged, had died out during the Jurassic period. But the determination of the age of this find proved that giant crocodiles existed in the Cretaceous period as well. Gilf Kebir is a large mountain range covering three countries, Egypt, Libya, and Sudan. The mountains in this system consist of porous sandstone and other crystalline rocks. Many caves in Gilf Kebir, which served ancient people as dwellings in the Stone Age, are located within this area. In the early 20th century, archaeologists explored these caves and found one particularly interesting, which they named the Cave of Swimmers. Inside, they discovered rock paintings depicting people in swimming poses, as well as images of giraffes, hippos, and other animals. Scientists believe this ancient artwork is at least 10,000 years old. Hungarian explorer Laszlo Almasi was part of that archaeological expedition. He was so impressed by the discovery that he dedicated a chapter to it in his 1934 book, The Unknown Sahara. In his opinion, the rock paintings indeed depicted people swimming. This meant that the Sahara once had a milder climate, with lakes and rivers present. This idea was sensational at the time, but now scientists know for sure that the Sahara was not always such an arid region. Meet the Sandcats, arguably the most charming inhabitants of the desert. This species was first discovered in 1858 in Algeria by French zoologist Victor Loche. Among wild cats, sand cats are some of the smallest. Their body length ranges from 65 to 90 centimeters, with 40% of this being the tail. Sand cats weigh between 2 to 3 kilograms. Another distinctive feature of this species is their large and wide ears. These cats have thick and soft fur that protects them both from the scorching sun during the day and from low temperatures at night. Their sandy color helps them blend perfectly into the desert environment. Sand cats are predominantly nocturnal. During the day, they hide among rocks or in burrows left by other animals, such as foxes. Their diet includes almost any creature living in the desert, including jerboas, gerbils, spiders, and lizards. It is also known that they sometimes hunt venomous snakes. Surprisingly, some people keep sand cats as domestic pets. However, it's important to remember that they are wild animals and their temperament is quite different from that of domestic cats, although they look very cute. 
Today, salt can be bought in any store at a low price, but once, it was literally worth its weight in gold. In ancient West Africa, there were problems with salt production, yet it was necessary for preserving food in strong heat. It could only be obtained by boiling seawater and burning certain types of plants. But such salt was not quite what was needed. At the same time, the inhabitants of West Africa had plenty of gold, which seemed somewhat useless. And when people learned that traders from the neighboring desert called Berbers were selling real salt, they were ready to give their gold for it. In the 5th century AD, Berber peoples began active salt mining in the Sahara. They placed the mineral in large stone containers and transported their goods on camels to West Africa. Salt allowed them to become some of the wealthiest desert traders, as they received gold in return, expanding their trade opportunities. This is why salt is also called white gold today. In 2012, a geologist from a Polish oil company, Jakub Perka, discovered aircraft wreckage in the Sahara Desert. After a detailed examination, he realized that the wreckage belonged to a British World War II fighter plane, the Curtis P-40 Kitty Hawk. The story of the plane's crash later became known. According to letters found in the pilot's cabin in June 1942, 24-year-old Sergeant Dennis Copping was supposed to transfer the damaged fighter from one airfield to another. Something went wrong during the flight, forcing the pilot to deviate from his course. It is likely he got lost in the desert. Neither Copping nor the plane had been seen since, and all searches for the crash site had been unsuccessful. Researchers believe that the pilot survived the crash, as evidenced by the absence of human remains at the site. Moreover, a parachute was found near the plane's wreckage, suggesting that Copping might have tried to use it for shelter from the scorching sun. Experts believe that the pilot initially tried to call for help using batteries and a radio station. When he realized it was futile, he decided to find a populated area on his own. However, the crash site is one of the most remote areas of the desert, so he likely perished in his attempts to find people. That's all from me. If you liked this video, don't forget to rate it. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell. Your activity is the best reward for me. Thank you for your attention. See you soon. Goodbye.